Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. Today's show is brought to you by Prep Dish. Ever wanted to try meal prepping but don't feel like you have the time? Yes, I'm raising my hand right now. Prep Dish makes it easy and it's perfect for beginners. It's a meal planning service that emails you each week with a grocery list and instructions. You're going to be able to prepare meals in advance that are actually healthy and delicious, which is what we want, you guys. Want to give Prep Dish a try? Text meal prep to 33777 and you'll get a free meal plan. Again, text meal prep to 33777 and you're going to get a free meal plan. You guys, yesterday was National Happy Hour Day. How fun is that? And if you didn't get a chance to share your favorite happy hour episode, be sure and do that today and tag me on all your social media so I can see it. I love to hear what are your favorites. Some of you guys go way back to like the very beginning days. You're like, my favorite is episode number 17. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was forever ago. Whatever your favorite is, we cannot wait to hear it. Today, my guest is Laurie Crouch. Our conversation was the first time we'd ever met, and I loved getting to hear the big arc of her life story. Laurie is a talented film producer, director, wife, and mother. She and her husband, Matt, lead the Trinity Broadcast Network, creating Christ-centered programs for all over the world. They go all over the world, you guys. It's crazy. She is tender and kind, and she shared with me how her and her husband, Matt, met, how they became involved in production work, and eventually how they were led to lead TBN. Y'all, as she shared this story, it was like a page turner. Love a book, like your favorite book. You cannot wait to see what happens next, or a movie that just kept unfolding, and you couldn't wait to see the next scene. You're going to love hearing Laurie's story. Before we jump into the conversation, I want to tell you that we have a Patreon party that is going strong. We've been doing Patreon for about a year, and those of you that are there, we are so thankful for you. Your support of the happy hour and your partnership with us, it impacts the ministry that we do. And believe it or not, we do see everything we do as ministry. Not only are we running a business over here, you guys, we're wanting more people to hear about how amazing our God is, how amazing Jesus is. So with your partnership and your support, it helps us create more shows. It helps us work on new things, all with the goal of sharing Jesus with our friends and families. Aaron and I are excited that we get to join our VIP friends tonight for our Unplugged Live with the Ivies. We do these once a month for our VIP members We love them so much because we get to be face-to-face with you. We get to answer your questions. We get to talk about things that are current in our life and what we're thinking about things from current music favorites to tough parenting moments to things in the news. It's a lot of fun. I love anytime Aaron and I get to do stuff together. So come join us, which actually, if you come join us tonight, you're probably gonna hear about something new Aaron and I got going on. So we would love for you to join us over on Patreon. For details, check out jamieivy.com slash Patreon. Oh, also, just so you know, well, let me just tell you first what Patreon friends get. There's the Unplugged that I just told you about. There's also a mini series, which right now we're in the middle of a book club. We're reading More Than Pretty by Erica Campbell. Last month, we read Be the Bridge with Latasha Morrison. And next month, we're reading a book about Christmas from Dan Darling. So they get the mini series. Then we do this thing that I am so much loving these days called after the show. And we poll our Patreon members and say, who do you want to hear more from? A lot of times you feel like you listen to the show and then you think, I wish Jamie would have asked this, or I have more follow-up questions to what they were talking about. Let me tell you, when I do the interviews, they're an hour and I always have more questions. I always have more thoughts. And so we bring back your favorite guests and answer the questions you want to know. We give you merch money every month to use in our store. But here's what you need to know. For our VIP Patreon friends, they get the first opportunity to buy tickets to our events. And I will just tell you that there's going to be a big opportunity soon for 2020. And Patreon, you're going to know about it first. So if you'd like to join us, it's fun. We give you things. You get to support our show. Head on over to jamieivy.com slash Patreon. All right, here's my conversation with my new friend, Lori. 
Laurie, welcome to the happy hour. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to have you here because you're on my turf, and um, we get to do things with you this week. I am I am so excited because I'm. let me just show you why I'm so excited, okay. and then we can do our thing. Okay. So I'm friends with Lisa Harper. I love it. She'll be here. I adore her. Yeah, like, I, I want her to be my sister. Mom. I never had a sister. <laughs> you know, I want yeah. her to be my sister. And she's told me about this show forever and ever and ever. Nice. And when I got an email that you guys invited me, she was my first reach out to say, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then I'm on with her. Right. So I think she's the reason why you're on. <gasps> yeah. I love right? her. So Lisa and I are 10 days apart. So she's like my we're, Okay. We're twins. You're twins. Yeah. So yeah, I adopted her a long time ago, but she's amazing. She's a dear friend that I've gotten to know over the past year and a half, and so it's so fun. So I'm in Orange County, California, yes, recording this at. Can I call this? Is this the TBN headquarters? This is the yes. We moved most of our headquarters to Dallas this okay. year, uh, but this is the mothership. This right is the, here, this is where it all much. started. Yeah, this is the production side. So the satellite you see out the window has been sitting out there for 40-some years. We got that from the U.S. government. It was number three satellite in U.S. What does that mean? Like the th- only the know. third one? <laughs> <laughs> I've just heard that story for 40 40- That's ginormous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not a, I don't know much about satellites. Yeah. But from what I would say, I might know that's a big satellite. Yeah, that's a big satellite. So we have 19 satellite with satellite, what they call, they call them farms, satellite farms. And um, we are on over a hundred and some satellites that cover the world. Now, you only need eight to cover the world. We're on a hundred and some. So we pay that like overachievers <laughs> here or what? What are we doing? We're making sure that the gospel is going around the world as easy and and accessible as it possibly can. Okay, so introduce yourself. We just jumped in, and yeah. I have so many things to talk to you about because okay. I just adore all that you guys are doing. But introduce yourself with your family and okay. your role and all that. All right. So my husband and I have two beautiful boys. I'm getting ready to go uh, get my girl. So my my youngest son is getting married next month. So that's exciting. So I am a full-blown mother. Our boys travel with us full-time. They have since they were babies. Did you homeschool? I did. So my first son went to school through the sixth grade. I had to make sure that they could actually read. I'm like, yes, yes. Because I was the worst homeschool Mm -hmm. mother in America. So (laughs) don't ever feel bad, you homeschoolers out there. You can do it. And then my second son came out of the third grade. Okay. But even before that, I was we were at a, a little Christian school that they let them travel with us. So we would go to India and shoot movies or Israel. So whatever we did, we took our kids with us. And then when we took them out of school, they, they did everything. But they do all of our television. You know, so we travel as a family. We stay together as a family, and um, that's just been my biggest joy in all the world. And so your new daughter-in-law. Yes. Is she going to be coming in and working here? Yeah. She, so she works here already. We moved her out from Nashville. So Yay. she's from Nashville. And um, she moved out here last September, and she's amazing. Her name is Audrey Grace. And, that sounds um, like such a southern name. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Alexander is mm. the last name. Yeah. So yeah. She she's adorable. And I'm just I'm thrilled to have a girl. Finally. So I exciting. tried for a long time to have a girl. <laughs> and two boys so, you got. Yeah. Yeah. So they finally but you know what? I will tell you this. Since you've never raised a daughter, you're about to get one at twenty some mm-hmm. odd years. Yeah. Um, I have three boys and one girl. Mm-hmm. And I love my daughter. I'm not I would never trade her in, obviously. Sure. She's my girl. <laughs> I love parenting boys, and I know you parented boys, but I adore parenting boys. There's just something about them. They they love their mamas. Yeah, they're amazing. So, you know, people ask me a lot, you know, well, how does it feel with Cody leaving? And so I'm going, Cody's not leaving. I said, I'm getting my girl, you know. So I hate hate the thought of that, that people would think that, you know, you're losing, but Mm -hmm. we're winning. That's so great. You know, that is so so great. We're we're growing. Our family's growing. And then someday it'll be six. Yes. That little baby running around. Yes. (laughs) So I'm excited. I think that that you are going to be like grandma number one. Are you most excited for looking for them to get married? And then are you most excited for them to procreate? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Do you tell them that? Actually, I told him I'd give him a lot of money for that. (laughs) 
I'm, I'll give you a lot of money to get married, and then I'll give you even more for that baby. <laughs> that is so funny. Hey, listen, if you're listening, take it. You're going to need the money. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm out here at the TBN Mothership place, and I have some questions for you because mm-hmm. I would love to hear how you and Matt— have kind of taken on this role okay. um, of running this wonderful organization. And the mission that you have is to get the gospel. And you've told me some things already that I cannot wait to talk about with Veggie Tales and yeah. Better Together and all the things that you guys are dreaming up over here. But can you, we go back a little bit to sure. how you guys kind of jumped into this position? Okay. Well, we got married and worked here from day one. So How I did started... you meet Matt? Okay. So... Uh, TBN started back in 1993, Okay, and it started right here in L.A. The Lord spoke to Paul and Jan at the same time. They were working for a radio station. My father-in-law is a businessman, and he is a engineer, and he could build old ham radios, you know, so he was very into all the technology and stuff. And um, so they had done a function while he was manager of one of the large radio stations out here, and the Lord spoke to them at the same time and said, I've released you from your work here and individually. And Papa looked at Jan and said, Jan, you'll never believe what God just spoke. And she goes, no, he said, he just spoke the same thing to me. You've, he's released, released us here. And, um, he resigned that job. And, um, Matt said I was, he was probably 10 okay. at the time. And all of a sudden his dad's just home during uh-huh. the day, doesn't go to work or anything. So this is early 70s. Early 70s. And then, uh, you know, that second word from the Lord came to, to Paul and said, call Angel Lerma and ask about Channel 40. And he had thought, well, I had called him back a couple months ago and his channel wasn't for sale. But he did. And... He called Angel Lerma, and uh, the secretary said, he's in a meeting right now. And he said, oh, wait, just a minute, here he comes. So Angel comes down the hallway and gets on the phone and goes, hello. He said, "Uh, Angel, this is Paul Crouch. And he says, I know you told me that your channel wasn't for sale, but I'm wondering if anything's changed. He goes, Paul? He said, did somebody somebody call you? He said, I just stepped out of the board meeting where we just decided to sell Channel 40. And Dad said, yeah. And Dad said, well... He said, um, then why don't I come see you? And the miracle stories of how just the obedience, you know, a lot of times we hear a word from God and we'll, I, let's just put it this way. I think one of the biggest miracles is that they were obedient to the first word. Exactly. And they resigned their position. They didn't wait till something opened up. They just did what God, I've released you here. Because that is, that, I mean... If I'm thinking about that and God comes to Aaron and I, I'm like, yeah. well, how about we release it when we are finished with our, when we have another job? Right. You it know. Lined up. Yeah. Yeah. And so he got that second world word. And I think that's so important because we're always kind of waiting for God to do something for us. And he goes, well, if you would just be obedient to mm-hmm. what I told you. And that's getting out. That's yeah. stepping out in faith mm-hmm. and doing something that you that's scary. Yeah. You know, you've got your family, you've got your wife, you've got your children, yeah. you've got to bring home the bacon, uh-huh. you know. So um, anyway, long story short, Channel 40 uh, right here in L.A. was, you know, had a very shaky white and black, you uh-huh. know, channel. And they started um, just getting on the air and saying, you know what, if you're watching this and you think that this could be a station that you would watch, it'll we'll do 24-hour Christian television right here. And the partners of TBN all these years, 40, going on 46 years now, have just sowed their, their lives into this vision. Yeah. You know, and my goodness, it's, it's amazing what God does with just faithful people, people that'll be obedient. Yeah. So, okay, I have a question though. Okay. okay. Were there any other Christian broadcasting networks? Yes. Like, was there any Christian stuff on TV in, in the early 70s? Yes. So, okay. Pat Robertson. Okay. Pat Robertson had had started CBN, but that's a that's that was a it. program. Oh, it was just one program. That's it a wasn't show. a whole channel, right? I see. I got it. I so, got it. and that's what CBN is. It's not a a network. It's a show. Got it. Right. So and, it's and on and you're, all over the world. And uh, your father in law saying, "I want a network." Network. Got it. Yeah. So he wanted to own. He wanted to own it all. Yeah. Because he thought if I go 
and try to get a partner and stuff, they can always say no. And I know what God's called me to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he was very focused. And um, so long story short, Channel 21 Phoenix opened up. And so they stepped out and they bought Channel 21. So my family, I'm from Arizona, and uh, my parents had pastored in Tucson. But at the time, I was a teenager, and my parents had taken a church in Iowa. Okay. Okay. So Tucson that was a, to Iowa. Uh-huh. Got so it. So I thought I had died and gone straight yes. to the 80s yes. for a moment because yes. I was 17. Um, were so, you out of college? I mean, were you into I college? I was homeschooled. You were so homeschooled. I was homeschooled after the ninth grade because my parents traveled and ministered also. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. So, okay. So I come back to Phoenix and I'm sitting with my grandparents that lived there in Phoenix and my uh, my in-laws would host pra- the Praise the Lord program. It was like from seven to 10 every night, three hour shows, you know, just great. They hosted a couple nights a week. Well, when you were staying with Grandma and Grandpa Lathan in Phoenix, you would go get your TV tray. And you would bring your dinner in to watch the Praise, Praise program uh-huh. when Paul and Jan were on there. So I was young and loved it, you know, but you're just, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're not yeah. maybe the target audience right. of the show at that time, right? I don't know. <laughs> and my grandma's sitting there one night and she said, I'm praying that you meet their son. Oh my gosh. And she said, the older one's married. And she said, but sometimes she brings his, their youngest son on here. And... What did I you just think? thought, well, that's about the dumbest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Looked at her funny, you know. And, and Jamie, it was probably a couple months later, my parents and I go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to a Kenneth Hagen camp meeting. And um, TBN was there covering it live every night. Well, I didn't know that. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and on the last night, the last day of that camp meeting was a Friday, June 29th, uh, actually July 29th of 1983. And after the morning services there at the camp meeting, my parents and I went across the street from the convention center into this hotel and this mall that were connected. And we start going up an escalator because we're going to have lunch over there before the night services. And as I was going up the escalator, I heard somebody say, there's Jane Crouch. And, you know, I'm 19 and I see her walk across. So she's walking from the mall back over to the hotel. I'm not staying in that hotel. And I get to the top of that escalator and I look at my mom and I said, I'll be right back. And I felt something push me in the back, and I started following her. Now, that is completely against everything I am. Yeah. Every, I, I, was, I was instantly embarrassed inside myself. I was traumatized. Because it could be sound kind of creepy, you know? Seriously. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm following this lady, and I'm just going to follow her. But you just felt her. like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I could not not follow her. I had... There was like a hand in my back. Now, did she know you were following her? No. And so I, she goes to the elevator, and I'm standing there at the elevator. The door, it was just like instant. The doors open. She walks in. I walked in behind her. I'm not <laughs> staying at that hotel. I am, I am mortified at what I'm doing. She pushes the 14th floor. I push the 15th floor. Oh, my gosh. If this was today, you'd have to have a key. And then no, you would be, she'd I be know, like, oh, right? you're not staying here. Where's your key? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I can't ever share this story because I'm so embarrassed at myself. But you keep going. But you I just can't like, okay. not go. And I'm standing in the, I get in the opposite corner. She's all by herself. She's standing in the other. And the whole elevator fills up with people. And I'm just thinking, someone's going to see me in there and go, you're not staying at this right. hotel. Who you know, you? what are you doing playing on the elevator? And I'm just standing there going, what in the heck am I doing? We go up about the fifth floor. Everybody gets off that elevator. And I'm just standing there looking up at the sky, you know, and she's over in the right corner. And, and I'm just, just mortified. And I hear her say, have I seen you somewhere before? Uh, and I just kind of turn and I go, I said, I don't think so. And she goes, who's your dad? Now, she didn't know I was there okay. for what? She didn't know anything. And and I said, my dad's Cliff Orndorff. And she went, okay, I've heard of him. And I'm just 
like oh, you're just thinking I'm about to get caught. Yeah, just open the door. Yeah, just, I need to know. Just, go just on, get to Jan, the floor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the door is open. She just stands there, and we're at her floor, and she's just standing there, just drilling a hole in me. And so I reach up and I grab the elevator door for because it's getting ready to close again. I go, you know, I said, I this is your your floor. You you, you can get off now, <laughs> you know. And she steps off and she turns back around at me and she says. Do you mind if I ask you how old you are? I'd like for you to meet my son. No, she did not. She did. And I just went. You said, you should have oh said, do you goodness. know my grandma? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, really? And she said, come back to the television booth tonight. You're at the camp meeting, right? And I said, yes, ma'am. And I said, you know, I said, wait. I said, well, you remember that you did this. Right. You know, and she she just, she had beautiful steel blue eyes. And she looked at me and she said, I will not leave that building until I see you. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I'll be there. I'll come back there. And, <laughs> and how old was Matt? Were you all like compatible so age? I was 19. He was 20 okay. at the Perfect. time. Yeah. And, um... I went back down, you know, I went up to my floor. <laughs> I came back down, went over to the restaurant. My parents and everybody was sitting at, and I just sat down with my mom and go, oh, my gosh, I've got to go call Grandma. Yes. So I go out to the pay phone back uh-huh. in the day. Yes. You know, Every, go to the anyone payphone. that's listening, right. we didn't have phones in our pockets. <laughs> that's right. And we had to have a dime we had to quarter. Have a quarter. <laughs> and I called my little grandma in Phoenix and, hey, baby, how you doing? The little chit chat. And I said, Grandma, I said, guess who I'm going to meet tonight? She, she asked where we were. Where are you guys? And I said, we're in Tulsa. Guess who I'm going to meet tonight? She said, oh, let me think. And she paused for a minute and she said, Matthew Crouch. This and is I, the craziest yeah. story I've heard in a long time. And I said, yeah. Oh, honey. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. And we met that night. And last night at camp meeting, the next morning, I'm going back to Iowa with my parents. He's going back to California. So we met that night. It's crazy. Okay, can I ask this too? Sure. <laughs> did he? Did he? Did his mom go back and say like, "I met a girl in the elevator, and I asked her to come back to the booth because I could feel yeah. weird too to a twenty-year-old boy." It was unbelievably awkward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she goes right to her room and called Matt. She said, "Matt, I found her. I found her." And um, he said, she said, I'm going to bring her tonight. You're going to see her tonight. And he's going, oh, mom, you know, and And my kids would be like, no, you've lost your mind. Exactly. And we both thought she had. (laughs) (laughs) So I went back that night and they were on the air, live on the air. And she started just when she saw me, she just started ripping her mic out. Well, they're sitting there with Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland it's live. And live. She starts just ripping her mic off to jump off the scene. So dad's kind of holding her down, you know, <laughs> till it was over. And she came and grabbed me. And it was, look what I found for Matt. And so she's taken me all around to everybody back there. Look what I found for Matt. Before you met Look, Matt? Before I met Matt. Oh, my gosh. I'm nervous now. I, I mean, I know I it ends up out, well. Uh, it was awful. <laughs> and and so Matthew was out in Oral Roberts' truck where they were doing all the uh, directing and stuff because it was live via satellite. And he was the director. So he's out in the truck. So she takes me out to this truck, and she's banging on that door. Oh it was uh, yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> she's banging on that door, and she's going, Matthew, come out. I've got her. I've got her. <laughs> and he's not coming to the door. Of course he's not. He's like, Mom, you've lost it. I've got Cinderella, Matt. Get out here. You know, and and I'm just dying a million deaths. Oh, he Had you ever seen him? No. Okay. So I kept seeing all these cameramen come back there because they were coming off the cameras and stuff. So I'm kind of smiling sweetly at everyone. <laughs> You're like, just in case. Oh, you don't know who he is. I don't it know could who be he anybody is. walking by. Yeah. So I'm just kind of being nice to everybody <laughs> and thinking, oh, I hope, that, oh, I hope that's not. Oh, I hope, you know. <laughs> and then when he comes out, um, we go back in. Oh, she took me right up to Papa and to Paul and said, "Look, look who I found for Matt. This is Matt." And so Matt finally comes in where we are, and I see him talking to his mom, and she's got her little purse, her, her little change purse, and she's open. She turns around at me and she goes, "I'm giving him money to take you out." And so y'all went out on a date. Right then and there, she put our hands together up in the air, right, and pulled us together. She said, now you two go get to know each other. And we went, 
And I, so when she walked away, I was How like... How did he seem towards this whole thing? Uh, I just said, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you do not have to take He me was probably out. weirded out until he saw you. And then he was like, okay, I, yeah. can, I can handle this. So I was Mom like... Mom picked a good one. I was like, I am sorry. I'm like, well, does she do this to you all the time? You know? <laughs> That's a good question. This is awful. You know? And he goes, he goes, oh, actually, she's never done this. And I was like, look, you don't have... It's so nice to meet you, but you do not have to take me out. He's going, no, it's okay. <laughs> so we go right back over to that hotel where they were staying. My parents were in the restaurant eating, and so... He just begged me not to make make him sit with my folks. Yeah, and yeah. so we went to a different table where we couldn't see anybody. And we sat there for three hours and talked. Oh, my god! Long story short, uh, they called Monday. And he said, is your, mo- is your mom home? Wait, who and called Monday? Matthew called me Monday. Okay. So that was Friday night. In the, in the Iowa yes. dreaded place you were living. Yes. And so he's I, like, can you come to California? And he said, my mom wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. Or my mom wants to talk to your mom. <gasps> so Jan gets on the phone with my mom. And she said, we want Lori to come with us as a family. Uh, Matthew, and a, we've been given a station down in Neva, St. Christopher. Love for Lori to come down there and be with our family for the next two weeks. You had met him one time. Met him one and time. And had a three-hour conversation. Yeah. And Jan is like, hey, come in to yeah. our family. And he went, he went back to his room that night. He was rooming with um, Jay Jones, who just passed away this year. And he said, I just met my wife downstairs. <gasps> so it was very, um, it was amazing. And so we dated for about four or five months and we broke up for a year. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah, which we don't tell that part. Well, tell it we, on the happy hour. What did. happened? <laughs> we did. And about a year later... Okay, why'd y'all break up? Can you tell me? You know, we didn't communicate well. Yeah. We just we just came from two completely different communication yeah. styles, you yeah. know? My dad was a minister. My mom didn't say much. You know what uh-huh. I mean? She was just so sweet and calm and not that Jan wasn't, but she wasn't. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she knew how to communicate really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were amazing, but it was just a different style. I had never fought verbally with a guy. I'd never debated anybody. I'd never, you know, and then I had this, this man that I marry that is just a verbal communicator that, um, said things to me that I tr- trying to get me to talk yeah. which just like you actually said that I can't believe you said yeah. that and so I just shut down you know so it just was bad and okay so you guys break up we broke up yeah how was Jan it was awful okay so you break up in that year are mm-hmm. you still communicating no okay it's done yeah so he he had called uh, my dad's church where I kind of started helping at and finally, I had one of the pastors just get on the phone with him and tell him not call, to call anymore. Oh, so he was pursuing you, and mm-hmm. you were saying, I don't know if it I can really do It was really sad. Yeah. Yeah, we okay. should have got married. We should have gotten married because that that year was awful. It was awful. So you're saying we, we should have just gotten married. Oh, ow, yeah. Did you learn anything in that year, though? Oh, yeah, that I should have married Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how yeah. did you guys get back together? Okay, so... Um, also, this feels like a movie. Yeah. So a year later. We're going to make this into a movie? <laughs> Come on. Almost a year later. So I do have a, a friend, um, one of my lifetime friends sitting right next to me here. In we do have Tracy. a live studio audience. Yes. yes. Everyone say hi. Yeah. Hi. See, they're here. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and so out of all the guys that I had dated, Matt was the one I didn't want to talk about most of the time during that year. And um, it just... It was a sore subject, you know, because it felt so this is what happened. So about a year later, all of a sudden he he's on my mind. He's in my heart and it's just horrible. And I was traveling a bit by my by myself and I um, and with friends and I'd come back out here to California and it was just I was back in the same location. I was here in Orange County and. Oh, my goodness. It was hard. And I remember I never wrote my parents a letter on the, on the road when I traveled. But I sat down during that time and I wrote my mom and dad and I said, it's been really difficult being out here. And I said, because it feels like a perfect puzzle, except there's a piece missing. Hmm. And if he was just a different person, it felt so it felt exactly what I'm called. It, it, mm-hmm. Whatever. It just yeah. felt perfect, you know. And they said, why don't you go to Phoenix before you come home and see grandma and grandpa? And 
I was like, but but don't you want me home? <laughs> go, well, go see Grandma and Grandpa for a, a few days. And then, and then, so it was kind of real weird that I was going to Phoenix. Well, at the same time, so so we land. My my beautiful uh, grandparents picked me up at the airport, and we're driving home. She said, guess who's going to be at our church Sunday night? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, who? And she said, Paula Jane Crouch. I was like, no kidding. <laughs> okay, this all makes sense now. Yeah. So Matt had just bought his first home here in OC. He goes to drop his laundry off on his <laughs> top of his mom's washing machine, <laughs> and she yells at, out the window that Sunday and says, hey, help fly us over. They'd just been given a, a little plane, uh-huh. and Matt was a pilot. And they go, fly us, help fly us over to Phoenix tonight. She knows we're what she's speak. doing, too, huh? Well. Did she know you were going to be there? No. <gasps> oh. Nobody knew I was there, but they were going to uh, Valley Cathedral, which was the, probably the biggest church there in Phoenix that um, that my grandparents went to for decades. And he goes, well, if I can, if I can fly, I'll come. And I'll just stay at the at the plane yeah. and wait for y'all to come back. So they, she says, no. She said, just come to the church. And so here I'm going to church with my grandmother, who that wants had you prayed to ma- uh-huh. that Matt and I would yes. get together, and with my grandfather. And lo and behold, we sit down. There's probably four or five thousand people at that church in the round. Matt said, I I stuck my head in there, and he said, you're the first person I saw. Stop it. And they walked down our aisle, and they ministered that night. And I just get my stuff afterwards, and I start walking out to the car. And this now I'm coming from this two weeks of just thinking about him yeah. all the time, and I yeah. just can't. But some just yucky stuff yeah. had happened both years. We got involved with people we had no business being, just yeah. dumb stuff, you know. And um, I just looked at my grandparents walking out to the car and I said, I just have to go back. And I was, I took everything inside of me. So I gave my grandma my purse and my Bible and just took a big deep breath. And I walked into the, the, to the sanctuary and they were all down in the middle and people were all around Paul and Jan and Matt. He had Mm -hmm. started this program. And so a lot of people wanted to meet him. And I just thought, God, he's going to just, probably act like he doesn't know me, you know? And so I just had to brace myself Mm -hmm. for that. And so I just started walking down the aisle towards him. And, you know, I get 20 feet away from him, and I see him just kind of turn his back on me. And I thought, you little Uh stinker. (laughs) And I thought, well, I'll just go up behind him and say, hey, you remember me? Or, you know, just ready for the coldest ever. I get about 10 feet away from him, and he says, I hear him say, excuse me. And he turns around to, at me, and he opens up his arms, and he just starts walking towards me. And we just fell into each other's arms. I'm going to cry. And it was like God just washed us with his grace and his love. And um, that was it. We got married. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was like we should have done this, you know, a good year ago. So um, it was beautiful. So I feel... You know, I always felt called to the ministry. I was raised as a pastor's daughter. I always was called to the ministry. I couldn't sing well. I, I, I sang, but I love to sing with people, but I don't have a good solo, so I wasn't going to be that. Um, and, and I did not want to be a pastor's wife. And I knew I was not going to do what my mom did, yeah. you know. So I didn't know what it looked like, yeah. you know. And so anyway, here we sit. <laughs> oh my gosh! So we got married in in August of eighty five. We're we'll be married for thirty five years. Or Was that just years. a few months after that hug in the sanctuary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, we're not we wasting got, that any was, time. Yeah, that was in November. Our folks came. We all met back in Phoenix. Yeah. together early January, and I came home with this family and lived with mom and dad Crouch. After that, and then you've been in California ever since. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. We got married in August and worked here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt the show real quick to thank our sponsors for today's show. Today's show is brought to you by Lola. Lola founders Jordana Keir and Alexander Friedman started their company by asking one simple question. Here it is. If we care about the ingredients in the food we eat, 
why shouldn't the same be true of our feminine care products? Have you guys ever thought that? It's true. And the truth is the FDA doesn't require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in their feminine care products. So most of them don't. But Lola offers complete transparency about the ingredients found in their tampons, pads, liners, and wipes. Major brands will use a mix of synthetic ingredients and harsh chemicals. Lola products, on the other hand, are 100% organic cotton with no added chemicals, fragrances, synthetics, or dyes. They offer pads, liners, and both BPA-free plastic applicator or environmentally non-applicator tampons, plus gynecologist-approved cleansing wipes. Lola makes your month a little bit easier with their fully customizable subscription that lets you choose your mix of products, absorbency, number of boxes, and frequency of delivery. You can change, skip, or cancel at any time. That's probably my number one favorite thing. You guys know I love anything's going to get shipped to my house. And I love that Lola sends it straight to my house and I get to decide. And I'm always prepared for when my monthly cycle comes. It's also a product I feel really good about using, especially as I have a daughter who's now reaching the age where she's going to need feminine care products. And I want to provide her with ones that are going to be safe. Lola is also helping to make that transition easy for young girls with their first period kit. It is a period survival guide that is full of honest and straightforward tips, which is so great when I talk with story about all things period related. For 30% off your first month subscription, visit mylola.com and enter happy hour 30 when you subscribe. That's mylola.com. Use the promo code happy hour 30. Today's show is brought to you by Sips Buy. This winter, warm up by exploring the world of tea. Sips By is the best tea club and makes discovering tea fun, personalized, and affordable. The Sips By box is the only multi-brand tea subscription box that's personalized uniquely to you. Each month, Sips By matches you with delicious teas from over 150 global tea brands, big and small, based on your unique preferences. And yes, Sips By even accounts for your caffeine tolerance and dietary needs. First thing you need to do is take the tea quiz at Sips By, that's S-I-P-S-B-Y dot com to see what your recommended flavors are. And then you can get a Sips By box, which includes loose tea, bag teas, or a mixture of both based on your preference, which makes 15 or more cups of tea. Making a tea profile for myself was super easy and the teas they sent were perfect for my taste. I especially love the steeping guidelines and the tasting notes included in my box. I never knew my tea could taste this good with a few steps and correct steeping and great tea bags. Also, the Boulder breakfast tea is delicious and great for waking me up during these early morning football drop-offs that we're still having for football practice. Love it. Follow at SipSpy, that's S-I-P-S-B-Y on Instagram for weekly giveaways and more. For my podcast listeners only, you guys are giving us a code. Use the code happy hour for 50% off your first Sips by box. You guys, 50% off. Use the code happy hour, sipsby.com. Today's show is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Hiring can be a challenge as Codable co-founder Gretchen Hubner discovered. Gretchen needed to hire a game artist for her education tech company. She knew it wouldn't be easy to find someone to grow her team, and that's exactly why she went to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter does not depend on candidates finding you. Here you go, guys. It finds them for you. Its technology identifies people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. So you get qualified candidates fast. Gretchen posted her job on ZipRecruiter, and she said she was impressed with how quickly she found qualified applicants. She also used ZipRecruiter's screening questions to filter her candidates so she could focus on the best ones. And that, my friends, is how Gretchen found a new game artist in less than two weeks. With results like that, it's no wonder four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at our web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash HH. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash HH. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. So you said, I I mean, I love your story. I got chills several times. I got tears in my eyes. 
Um, I love a good love story. And I love, too, uh, a story where you can see that God has orchestrated things yeah. beyond our control, which is what he does. Yes, but he sometimes does. when it is so very evident that you can't deny it yeah. are my favorite type of stories. Yeah. Because you, then you know what? You can't get out of That's it. That's exactly right. This because is not our like, own doing. Exactly. Yeah. So I believe in purpose and destiny. Yeah. And, and I just... Um, when stuff like that happens, you don't have you you don't have an out. Yeah, I mean, you were destined to be a crouch. Yeah. I mean, listen, so, everyone knew this. So if you leave, you're walking away from destiny. Yeah, and I truly believe that. So you said you knew you wanted to be in ministry, but you knew what you didn't want to do in ministry. Um, and this is in the you know mid seventies, which I think ministry for women did look a lot different mm-hmm. in that time than it does now. How has it been for you? Being a part of TBN and getting to see God really use you in ways that you could have never imagined. I mean, I I look at even myself having a podcast. This didn't exist 20 years ago. No right. one would have said, oh, I want to be a podcaster. Mm-hmm. And here you are. You would have never guessed no. the, the opportunities that you would have had, the ways that you'd be able to be a part of something that ministers so globally around the world. How does that feel for you looking back on that story of this girl who knew she wanted to be in ministry but didn't know what that looked like? Yeah. You know, that's just, we're all just normal people doing what we're supposed to do in the kingdom of God. Right, yeah. And and I sit back and I look at TBN like I would any, any, anybody else. I'm just happy to be sitting here, you know, that we get to be a part of this, you know, that everybody who has ever given, everybody who has ever worked here, anybody who's ever prayed, we're all a part yeah. of this beautiful thing that's called the kingdom of God and that God would use any of us to do anything is just miraculous, especially me, especially, yeah, yeah. because I don't come qualified at all. I didn't go to Bible school. I didn't go to communications. I didn't do anything. (laughs) Well, I think it's just, I think that's an encouragement to everybody listening is that I think that a lot of us can be in spaces in life where we feel like God's given us this, this grand mission, whatever that, if that looks like raising six kids or it looks like serving in Uganda, or it looks like you teach kindergarten, Sunday school every week for 15 years. Like you have this mission, you have this field. And so many times we can feel as though, God, I don't deserve this and I feel underqualified, but isn't it amazing how he equips you? Yeah, it's crazy. More than you could ever have equipped yourself. Truly. I mean, if God ever uses anything that I say or do ever, you know, you can't even hardly even fathom that. It has to be him. Okay, That's so what crazy. year did you and Matt take over TBN? Okay, so um, we came back. So we went to Hollywood. Okay. In, in, in 1995, we, um, we left TBN in 92 uh, and started Generation Entertainment, and we went up to Hollywood, which is a whole story in itself, with our two little boys, uh-huh. and made some movies. And you were producing movies, am I yeah. right? Yeah, so we produced, um, our first one was in 1999 called uh, The Omega Code, and then we went to several different others, and we did One Night with a King, uh-huh. which um, a lot of people love, and so we did that, and in probably about 2006, Seven. I never thought we'd be back at TBN. It was kind you of know, like this season, and you guys moved on to do this, and yeah. TBN was thriving. But you felt that you guys were going to do this something else. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, I didn't know what the future looked like there, but it's always in your heart, and you love. And we were always a part. We hosted all through that time. We, I did a kid show that I kept doing for a couple of years, and um. And then just started feeling a burden, and his mom and dad um, just uh, needing some help yeah. here. And and probably the biggest miracle was inside of me because mm-hmm. it was like your mom and dad need our help, you yeah. know. And and in two thousand nine, uh, we were on the plane with my with my precious father in law and. He said, Matthew, he said, do you ever see the time that you sell your company and you come back and you serve as president of TBN? And Matt kind of said, well, he said, do you? You know, that's your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Are you asking her? (laughs) And Papa said, yes, I do. And and he started crying. And um, so we said, 
and the Lord had spoke to us and said, it's time to serve your parents. And we didn't know what that looked like. We didn't. That can mean a lot of things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so we told them because we had like several people, ministers that, that you'd probably know, call us with on a weekend just out of the blue, these phone calls and said, it's time to serve your, your parents with no agenda. We're like, oh, what does that mean? You know, we're up in L.A., and yeah. that's our sanctuary, and that's our thing up there. And, and so we just came down, and we sat on the floor. Mom and Dad were sitting there on the couch, and we said, okay. We're, and Matt just told them just point blank. He said, look, so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so has called us this weekend, told us to come serve you with no agenda, with nothing on the table. What does that even mean? You have to tell us what that means. I was like, do you want me to come clean your toilet uh, more? What does that do mean? Do you want yeah. us to just stay away more? Uh-huh. Do you, what, what does that mean? And Papa looked at Jan and said, um, go get the letter. This is and another movie. I don't even know goes, what the letter I says, know, but I, I cannot wait. I know. And anything important to my father-in-law, he wrote. So he wrote all the newsletters, the monthly newsletters. He wrote it on a yellow pad. He For would, all and, of you younger people listening, we yeah, used to write things pad. with a pencil and a yeah, pen. And yeah, and it's kind of larger than uh-huh. just a normal, <laughs> <Yes>. like... <laughs> and it really is yellow. <laughs> and and she goes upstairs and brings out this paper, this um, baggie with a seven-page handwritten note from my father-in-law. And he put it in a baggie to keep it safe, I yes. bet. That and sounds like something my grandparents safe. would do. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. And he read it to us. And Seven it was pages. that you would that Matt would take over, become the president of TBN, and we're just sitting there going, "Oh Jesus, help you!" Like <laughs> serve your parents with no agenda. Mm-hmm. We thought we were coming for weekend no. visits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we we said we when we came down to kind of do the logistics of stuff, we still had a company. You know, we had an oh, entertainment company yeah. up in LA. So we were just kind of telling our lawyers, saying, "Just say yes to everything." Just say yes to everything. That was the directive. Matt and I wouldn't even really talk about it because it was so, so huge. So huge. Yeah. And it was just, yes, say, uh-huh. just say yes to everything. Just give us time to do it. And so our oldest son, Kalen, was getting ready to go to L.A. Film School 2009. And that was like a 13-month thing. And we said, um, maybe at the end of that, we'll start heading down here. So we did. So in 2011... We came back. My father-in-law, Paul, um, passed away in 2013. And we had uh, two, three years of the best years ever with him. Yeah. We got to take him. He wasn't super healthy. He'd had some health issues. And we got to take him around the world and see the gravity God. and see some of the things that he was his mind was blown, yeah, you know, and just to see what God had done around the world. And those years were just priceless, mm. just unbelievable. So he died at the end of 2013. And then my sweet, my, my sweet mother in love died in uh, May of 2016. And then it, we just took TV in 2.0. Yeah. And, um, done a few changes <laughs> and um we're just excited about the future and what god's what god's done it's amazing you know i can't help but think when i was thinking about coming here and spending time with you guys on better together which i want to talk about next and getting to meet you i just kept hearing the word legacy mm. and even you talking about being able in those last years of your father-in-law's life to take him around for him to really see the impact amazing. of what that one small decision, it didn't seem small at the time, mm-hmm. many years in the 70s to say, I'm going to quit this and I think I'm going to do this on Channel 40. Mm-hmm. What That one decision, yeah. it's impacted the entire world. It has. And people know Jesus because of that. Yeah. And so what does it feel like to you for me to say, how do you feel about your legacy after mm-hmm. taking over TBN and what you guys are implementing here and the changes that you're making and the way that you're getting the gospel into so many parts of the world? Yeah. I mean... Is that humble? What does that feel like? It's crazy. I am married to a visionary, you know, and, um, you know, every day we wake up and the future, he Mm -hmm. wakes up to that. And he wakes up to um, 
laying it all on yeah. the line to yeah. get to do more and to reach more. So he sees TBN as the foundation. And now, so TBN kind of, you know, the, the wires and the satellites and stuff, you, you, you don't need any more. You know, we've, we've kind we've of passed that technology. Passed that. Got it. And my husband is very focused on the content. And it's like, okay, now that that's built, now that you've got the microphone, what are you going to say? Yeah. He was focused on content. Mm -hmm. Now, he sees TBN as a platform, as as a foundation. I don't think TBN will ever change. It'll be better. You know, it'll be it'll be. um, Well, I mean, even from a from an outside person looking in who I haven't spent much of my time growing up watching TBN, Mm -hmm. there is a different idea when you hear TBN now than when you used to hear TBN when I was, I'm 41, so when I was growing up. That's a yeah. true statement. Yeah. And that's nothing sure. bad, right? Right. No. It's just obvious. Seasons. Yeah, seasons. Yeah, seasons. So TBN go. 2.0 and your husband's saying, hey, we're going to, yeah. if, if people thought it was this before, we're going to do this from now right. on. Yeah. But his goal and his, his heart is, I want to make content for every other network, mm. you know, and, and let's not just use this station, I love this that. channel. Mm-hmm. Let's take production and content and let's influence the nbc's and abc's and cnn's and Ooh, i like this. that that's his thing mm. well you know you don't know this you, you know my dream job what everyone listening knows okay. all my listeners know a tv I uh, i'm gonna be a tv show host so i well, see so yeah, i'm making come on now, i'm gonna come over here and i'm yeah. gonna um you ever done it no, <laughs> but you know You're what? I started right podcasting place. without doing it. <laughs> but I really do love the way that I can hear when I talk to you, when I when I see Better Together and I see the mission of what you guys are doing. You guys are laser focused on let's get the gospel yeah. to the world. Now, Better Together, this is your baby, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> so how um, did this come about? Okay, so the last time that I saw my mother-in-law well, um, where she was actually talking um, to me, I saw her when she had a stroke. So we flew back from Bulgaria um, to be with her, but she couldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So the time prior to that, my last time of seeing her face to face where she was talking to me, I got the finger in the face. And she said, baby girl. Is that what she called you? Yep. She said, it's time for you to do something for the women. She said, you know, we wake up to hope and grace every morning with Joel Osteen and and Joseph Prince. She says, where's the love for the women? And I just thought, oh, that's all I want to do is more TV. (laughs) You know, I was like, okay. And she said, I'm serious. And she was real serious. And um, that's the last time I got to speak to her like that. You know, I got, of course, talked to her on the phone, but... Um, that was my last face-in-face encounter when she was doing the talk. And so you took that to heart and said, I, I think did. I need to do this. Yeah. But it took, well, I had to come up with something. You know, if that was what she felt, then, well, who do we get to do that? Yeah. That, is that what you were thinking? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll just well, we'll okay. create something well, and they'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Who's going to do that? You didn't think you. Know? you. Uh, I mean, she be, was pretty direct with okay. that. But, yeah, I can't do anything by myself. <laughs> so where did the better together come from? Um, that was probably sitting around with some friends. Well, you know, I, Jamie, I can't tell you. I don't, it was like, I've told the girls, it's like one day you wake up and there it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. And my husband, um, after a while, it took a while. And, and I knew I, I have amazing friends. You know, we, we all could do this show I if mean, we this sat is, down with our friends. This is why know. I started the happy hour. Yeah. Oh, can I talk to a friend exactly. and then let everyone hear it? Yeah. Yes. So we just happen to have cameras. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, exactly. So it's no different. We're just normal women that do. Nor- we've got kids. We've yeah. got to feed. We have husbands. You know, All the we're things. just yeah. nor- jobs and we're normal people. A lot of people say, won't you ever have any normal women on? It's like, what? <laughs> we're about as normal as you can get, you know. And um, and so all I could think was, man, I've got some amazing friends, you know. So I started talking to a few of them. And what does that look like? And all of a sudden, I hear my husband, the visionary, mm-hmm. talking about stuff to other people. 
Okay. So then it's get that set designer in here and get that in here. And I'm having a meeting over here. Kind of, I didn't really have much to do with that. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, I just knew there was a set being built out here. For you? Mm-hmm. Okay. I love this. Uh, <laughs> and... And He's I'm like, Lori, like, come to work today. Look what I made you. <laughs> it's kind of the way it yeah. happened. Oh, look at here. Uh-huh. Look at this studio. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, so I did. I started reaching out and just saying, man, if we do this, would you be a part? You know, and I can't, I can't even remember when I said better together. And then I thought maybe that was a little corny. And then I thought, oh, but you know what? It's true. It's true. It's just as true, you yep. know, corny or mm-hmm. not. It's yep. true. And um, and then everybody was so into it. And so, sure, we'll do that. But my husband, what my husband did is he said, baby, he said, every time we go have dinner or lunch with anybody, he said, you girls are down at one end. Guys go to one end, you know, and and but there's just chatter. Yeah. And he goes, do that. Just do what you do at dinner every night and I'll make the set that helps you do that. So he did, you know, you just it's saw so it. beautiful. And um and it's just us five sitting there and it's just a conversation like we would at dinner. And um people just drop down in the, on that conversation and it just came together. It just came I, it just did, it just happened. And you know, yeah, it's just weird. And well, it's but it's been so fun. Well, I am so excited to join y'all tomorrow. Gonna this is the first time. year. It launched this summer, am I yes. right? Yeah, in April April, yeah. April twenty second of two thousand nineteen. So yeah. how are you feeling? Is this is this a seasonal thing or just every it is every day? <gasps> We've morphed. Daily show. Yeah, this is a daily show. I knew it was daily. I didn't know if you had seasons. <laughs> I we kind of started out, I think, thinking we were, going to do and then you just kept making them. <laughs> yeah, because we wanted it to be. Yeah, it's a daily it's show. It's consistent. Yeah. So TBN's only done one daily show, and that's um, the Praise Program, right? Praise the Lord. But but we've got all these other studios that yeah. we can do that from. And yeah. But to have a daily, it's a it's a project. It's a thing. It's a thing. You know, and with all the editing and and all that, and then you've got all these people with their different schedules, and it's not. So what we do is these are my friends yeah. and sometimes we sit on that set and there's 120 years of friendship, you know, in combined that circle. in there. Um, and then if, if a couple of them say, oh, we've got this great friend and um, you would love her and she'll, she could come and do this, um, then I trust that and that's why you're sitting here today everybody loves you so tomorrow excited. Yeah. so um so that's so it's not like having a guest right on the yeah, show that's what i love know, it's yeah. just it's just very relational and it, very, it, that comes across very well you guys have good. done a good job good because it does feel like there are five friends sitting in a circle and we get to sit in with them yeah so cc tomorrow mm-hmm. so cc winans uh will be will be on with us tomorrow and you know i've known her for 40 years yeah. you know so it, it's that it's fun and it's fun, fun. Yeah. well congratulations on the success and just mm, stepping into Lord. another thing where you can go hey here's another way we can use our gifts and talents and resources yeah. um, to encourage women because I know um, that I like that Jan was like we need something for the women yeah and it's so true it's so true because you know what you can turn on TV yeah now and you know different women's shows and stuff and I have seen some of the most vitriol stuff well, I was going to say, this is not a new concept. No. It's no, just a beautiful, with beautiful words, and mm-hmm. we're not tearing down. We, we I just put myself other. in here like I work here. You guys, did y'all see well, that? I said, we. You know, you'll be officially a co-host okay. of Better well, Together me, tomorrow, because well, that's what we all are, co-hosts. Jamie Ivey co-host is Better Together. No, but you it is. Say, it, you're doing something that is done in other ways, and you're doing it to glorify the Lord. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last thing I want to ask you, Lori, before we're done. You are about to be a mother-in-law. I am. Are your parents still alive? My my daddy died okay. in 2015. And your mom is still alive. My mom, yeah. Is she still in um, Arizona? She's in Dallas. Okay, in yeah. Dallas. She's in Dallas, and she remarried. Oh. And uh, just a, a man that I just adore, and that's a cute story, too. I love yeah. it. So is the wedding here, or where? In, where's the, the wedding the coming up? The wedding's in Colorado. Okay. Yeah. And so 
It's small and it's just cute. It's cute to see how kids do weddings these days. It's very different. It's very different. Very different. <laughs> so I, moms have to just kind of zip it up. Uh, it's very different. <laughs> it's just all Pinterest and all kinds of things. Don't you but wish I did we had say, this stuff? did you have a big wedding? I did. <laughs> Ginormous. I did. Like she was in it. Like how many bridesmaids? <laughs> no, she said a hundred. <laughs> I More think than I 10? I had 14. 14. That is a big wedding. We had it at the C- Crystal Cathedral. Okay. Yeah. And there were what, like a couple thousand people there? Uh, Open to the public? Well, it wasn't. This until is like a Princess Diana wedding. It was like uh, on the Friday night before the Sunday wedding, mom and dad were on the air and talking about it because uh-huh. it was coming up. and. And my mom said, oh, everybody come. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that I arrived at noon, and they were turning me away for the 3 o'clock wedding. And uh, you're, I'm glad you got in as a bridesmaid. Yeah. yeah, right? And I was like, but here's my dress. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm supposed to yeah. be here. And, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was we good. had a big wedding, too. Not like that, but yeah. my husband did work at a church. And so it was kind of like. Everyone's Everybody. invited. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of weddings, I think if I, if Aaron and I were to like redo our wedding, which mm-hmm. that you don't have to, but if yeah. we were, yeah. <laughs> I think I would get married on a beach with like 10 people. Yeah. Doesn't that sound dreamy? Yes, it does. <laughs> and now I'd have all my kids there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can re- renew your vows sometime. You know what's funny is I ask Aaron all the time, can we please, we just celebrated 18 this summer. Nice. I said, can we renew our vows? Yeah. And he looks at me every time and he says, um, I made a covenant to you and there's no reason for me to renew that. And I'm like, okay, can we just have another yeah, wedding? Can we just can have, we just a, have party a party on the beach? <laughs> he said, that's what I always say. He says, I think you want a party. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually, I just want a party at the beach with my friends and the kids. So yeah, so maybe we'll have a 20th anniversary party. Nice. Yes. That's perfect. I know that's what we'll do. That's perfect. Laurie, thank you so much. I love you. It is You're such so a cute. joy. I appreciate what you do. Thank you. It's amazing what you do. Thanks, And friend. that you would, would open up your life and your heart to all these beautiful women that you have on. You've got a great list of podcasts. I have a great job. I always say I have the coolest job. I mean, I yeah. just get to sit down with friends and then showcase women to the world, you know, great? and so it's so fun. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, we all know that God wants to do something for us. We all know he's a good God, but Better Together is, and and your podcast, it's, we know God wants to do, but how did he do it for you? That's exactly right. How did you get through this? How did you get through Mm -hmm. that? And you're so encouraging. Yes. And I always say stories change the world. And so when you tell your story and I tell my story, whoever sits down on the set of Better Together on the happy hour and we tell our stories, testimony, there's somebody listening and going, God, God moves in their heart because of what God moved in your heart. Absolutely, so, absolutely. We have cool jobs, huh? I, know. I always say I have the coolest job in the world. But thank you for doing yours. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Friends, was that story amazing about how Laurie and Matt met and how God led them back to work at TBN? And you guys, after we finished recording, I asked Laurie. I said, "Okay, tell me, how old was the letter that your father-in-law had written?" Like, how old was it? How long ago had he done this? She said it had been a few years and he was truly keeping it safe for the right time. I could not believe it. I felt like I was listening to a movie unfold. I appreciate how Laurie is working to bring a program for women, that their goal is to lift women up and not compete or tear each other down. If you've not been watching Better Together, you really should check it out. I'm actually making my debut as a co-host on the show, Better Together, on Monday, November 18th. It's a daily show. I'll be on every day that week on TBN at 1.30 Eastern and 10.30 Pacific. And I know that you're going to enjoy the women I got to sit down with. You're going to be thoroughly encouraged through our conversation. So make sure you check it out next week, November 18th. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper and the music was developed for the show by Matt Graham. Show notes are written by Aki Slockers and the whole thing is organized by Lindsay Sweeney. Next week, my guest is Whitney Caps. You all may remember, I mentioned my friend Whitney a few weeks ago when we shared with you all about the Simple Seminary and how they had an open enrollment for us. Well, she's co-leading this program with her dad. She's a girl's girl, a boy mom, and a wife living in Atlanta. I cannot wait for you to hear our conversation next week. Whitney can preach, and what we talk about is still sitting with me since then. You're gonna love it. Guys, enjoy your week. Share the show with a girlfriend. Have a happy hour with a friend. Share it with us on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. What has been your best happy hour episode ever? What have you loved? I'll see you guys back here next week with my friend, Whitney. <laughs>